My name is Charlotte Warren. I'm an associate with Population Council, and I am the one, uh, the principal investigator for the Kenya um, country as part of the five country study for the vouchers project. So my main role is to oversee the um, development of the uh, questionnaires and data collection tools, and and then ensure that the data is collected and the quality is good. Um, across the all the voucher sites that are in Kenya. And I also have another role in ensuring or looking at the quality assurance of health facilities across all five countries. But my main focus has been on Kenya to date. I think the first thing is that um, having won the proposal, uh, we've already written a proposal, we then have to um, say how we're going to do the data collection. So you have to write a research protocol um, which is reviewed by the ethical board, both at Pop Council and the Kenya at Kemri. Um, so you have to go through describing who your population is, why you're targeting them, and then um, the sample size and uh, the selection of facilities, and, and, and then the control sites. Why we because there's uh, there's now four va four voucher districts, but there are three. So then we needed to have, find a district that was comparable to the voucher district so that then we could have a control. Um, so then you have a, a number of objectives which have indicators. So it's then how to ask the questions that will meet the indicator or how you're going to measure it. So a lot of the, th you know, the population-based surveys, which we um, went around, um, interviewed women around the facilities that were voucher and non-voucher facilities. So asking questions, how, how do you make sure that, ha have you ever used a voucher? Um, did you have you ever bought a voucher? Have you have you um, used it? Where did you use it? What did you use it for? So it's going through a lot of those kind of things. And the other questions, we're looking at um, the wealth index of an individual. You need to ask them about their assets. You know, how do you um, do? You own a, a radio or a TV? Do you have running water? Do you have a inside toilet or whatever? Um, and do you eat a meal, you know, a meal every day or three meals every day? So there's a whole load of preliminary questions. And then if you're interviewing women, then you have to ask the questions around how many times they've been pregnant, whether you can do it with their babies, and then build up a picture about the woman's kind of history around family planning, uh, delivery, HIV, that sort of thing. It's quite a lengthy process, and it's and it is. Um, yeah, and, and that's just one, you know, we have a whole range of them because we also did health facility assessments looking at um, observing um, the clients receiving care from the providers. So somebody sits in the corner of the room and has a checklist. So you have to then train those people and then just to make sure that all the things that they're checking are from the kind of country standards of care. Um, so to make sure that the, what we're asking is what should be done and then having a measure. So that's the quality of care to measure whether the, uh, the providers are doing what they should be doing. And then once we've developed them, then we pre-test them and we translate them and then pre-test them. Uh, and in some instances we have, we put them onto a, a handheld device to do the actual data collection. But if it's a paper questionnaire, then it has to come back here and we enter it into the database and then clean it and then get around to analysing it. So it's, it is a very long-winded process. Um, well, for the, the target population for the vouchers are the clients and non-clients. So in, in, within the, so we do a household survey around the facilities, whichever they are, that have been at, um, accredited to be a voucher facility. And so those are inter the women are interviewed. Um, so we go to household to household. And either women either interview the woman um, or a man, but not from the same facility, not from the same house. Um, and so we're looking at all the reproductive behaviours really, and accessing care. And then for the men, we're asking, you know, where did your wife last deliver? Um, has she accessed these, you know, these kind of things? In um, for the urban centres, there's two in Nairobi. Rwandani and Korogocho, we didn't do a population study there 
because another organisation called APHRC were already doing a longitudinal study following women or following families every six months over a number of years and they had already asked questions around vouchers. So we've, we have written some papers with them using their data. But we did do focus group discussions um, with women and men and in-depth interviews as well with the, um, the people in those slums to get a, build up a picture and also the, of the facilities that the, those women would have gone to. Vouchers do seem to make a difference. Um, poorer women are able to access the care which previously they might not have done. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing, the, 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 how many people who have actually delivered having had a voucher. And I think in some of the data we've shown that the equity, equity gap has, has narrowed, so poorer people are now more likely to access services and health facilities previously than my lot. Some of the downsides from the, from the communities, if you're going to labour at night, because of the security, they're unable to get to a facility and, the, and the, you know, there's not, many, not so much transport at night. So a number still do deliver at home, even if they have a voucher. But they may go for antenatal and for postnatal, so at least they'll get that, that care. And the same in, in Kitui, uh, which is a, a rural district east of Nairobi. Um, the distances are huge, and so again, women may buy, buy the voucher, but up, uh, one year, I think 40% bought the voucher and did not use it because of the issues around transport and, and going into labour at night. Um, in other countries, the, the voucher actually covers um, transport as well, um, which I think would be a useful thing here because that's the big, biggest inhibitor of use, is, is getting to the facility. Long-term methods are, are very um, not used very much, but where we have seen um, some of the facilities have, have gone and done some more training and they are providing their services now. So we have seen an increase in the long-term methods such as the coil or the implant. Um, one of the other things that we have seen an improvement with the health facility assessments where we observed the, the clients and the providers, we didn't see any major improvements in quality of care compared to the control sites. And this is probably due to the fact that the money that the, um, the providers or the facilities get from the disbursement fund, they're not using it on training. They're using it to make the, paint the rooms, uh, add on another wing, buy equipment, but very little is spent on staffing or training of the staff. And I think that, that shows straight through that, that, that that's not seen as a priority yet the quality of care is no different to any other facility um, in the country really. The only big difference was there was an improvement in postnatal care, well that was because we were doing another project in the same district on postnatal care, so we, we trained people from those facilities that were voucher facilities. The Nairobi facilities are a bit um, different because there's only these two um, informal settlements where the vouchers are being sold and there aren't that many facilities within, well, I don't think there are any facilities within those um, informal settlements, they're, they're kind of on the periphery. Um, so a lot, of a lot of people will probably go to the nearest one because they know it's accredited but it might not be the best one. And the other challenge in Nairobi is that if you're referred and you're poor you usually go to Pomani Maternity Hospital which is massive. This, I think the biggest um, maternity hospital in East Africa, or Eastern Southern Africa, up to the Limpopo, apparently. Um, and there, they're short-staffed. Um, recently, they had 47 babies delivered in there were only four nurses, so it's impossible to improve the quality of care unless you increase the number of staffing. But the, um, the, within public health facilities, there's a... Um, you're not allowed to use voucher money for or OBA money for s recruiting staff, and yet they have many, many babies born there. So they're obviously getting quite a big sum, and yet they can't use it on even two nurses to support. So it's that's a big challenge, and it's it's a shame because I think that if the voucher money went straight directly to that hospital, 
and they could use it any way they wanted in improving services, then those services would be improved a lot.